Hello everyone, this is White Wolf. We are going live and we're going to be talking about trusting the process. Trusting the process is trusting in your faith and your ability to prolong the journey, to stay on the journey, to really assess and reevaluate and have automatic awareness upon where you are at at this point in time and where you have came from and giving yourself a bit of insight and direction and knowing how bold you can be with the faith that you have within your life. So understanding that we have to see the grace that has been given to us, we have to see the sacrifices that were made, and we also have to see how our guides and our higher self are moving things out of the way so that we can manifest the life of our dreams, so we can accumulate that spiritual mass, so that we can go for the things that we actually want out of life, and also just crushing those dimensional ley lines that don't need to be there anymore and making sure that our reality is more parallel, but also that we are in sync with our vibration and our emotions and our thoughts and seeing how we can channel our energy and balance out our energies in a way of changing the polarity of cause and effect, of changing the direction, changing the angle of attack, but also making sure that we can really trust the process and what's being bestowed to us and what's being given to us and also interpreting the knowledge as well so trusting the process is really just having faith in what you do and knowing what you're doing has a great impact in the world rather you're seeing results or not rather you're seeing it manifest or not rather you're seeing it be in the scope of what you're doing just because you don't think it's important and just because you don't think you're important does not mean that you're not important. You might be important to somebody else. You might be important to your children. You might be important to your job. You might be a very important person in your life, but you have to see that for yourself. So it's kind of understanding that we all go through so much in life. We go through so much to really understand why we're here. Why are we doing this? Why are we on the journey itself? Why did we come onto the path? Why did we awaken? It's always the question why, and it's always the question that drives that impulse to really know ourselves and to really figure out how to generate different revenues of creation, of prosperity, of stability within ourselves. And it kind of lets us know that we're here for an innate reason to exist. And because existence has a reason to exist, we have a reason to impart. And if we have a reason to impart the wisdom, the knowledge, the love, and the resonance, then we have the ability to trust the process and trust the information that has been given to us and trust that the reason why we are here is because we're here to give the love and the light back to others. We're allowing ourselves to shine that light back into another person's scope of awareness. So it's an act to another person's scope of awareness. So it's an act of service and it's being directed by spirit. If we allow ourselves to be directed by spirit, then we're allowing ourselves to be in divine obedience. We're allowing ourselves to be in the scope of actually receiving from the divine. And if we allow ourselves to do that, then we are given our life to the divine source of creation. It means we want enlightenment. It means we want the most out of our meditative abilities. It means that we want the most out of our meditations. It means we want the most out of trusting the process itself. So just because you're not necessarily trusting the process right now, and just because things may not be going your way or the circumstances and the experience are not in vibrational alignment, it actually means that you're doing the right thing. It actually means that there's a path being paid for you. It actually means that there's things being moved out of the way. And it means that there's a lot of energy being cleared out of ourselves. So just because we're not seeing those automatic results doesn't mean that we're not automatically there. We're just not there yet. So a lot of the times in reality and life and all the things that we experience on the spiritual journey is really understanding like, why are we here? What do we want from our journeys? What do we want from life? Do we want the best out of life? Do we want to really know ourselves? Do we really want to tap into our divine source of creation? And just because you don't think that you're tapping into your divine source of creation actually means that you are. It actually means that you're tapping more into the vibrancy that you want to become. It actually means that when you're going through a lot of healing and reception 
in separation and really extrapolating everything out of your experience and kind of seeing why it's happening, seeing why everything comes to balance, why we fall in and out of relationships, but also why we fall in and out of businesses or jobs or certain stages in our life or a certain place that you live. It's just the current of life because life never stops. Life is infinite. We are infinite. We are immortality, believe it or not, because our soul is always working omnipresently all the time. So our soul is working 24 seven. It's working on our behalf. It's trying to make us tap more into it inside of this vessel. And we have help from our guys, our higher selves and God's first energy. But a lot of it is dependent on how we want to be that multiverse, to be that metaverse, to be that psychic intuition, but also to see ourselves in a much different light as we're trusting the process. Trusting the process means that we have to be bold with our decisions. We have to be bold within our lack of attachment. We have to be bold and be more non-attached to what we're experiencing. And we have to be a non-dual awareness that's independent of its own self. So the independence is the free will. It is the grace that we've accumulated. It's the change over time that we've seen in ourselves. So grace is when you have been gifted a new life, even though when we incarnate here, we have been gifted a new life. But some of us did not have the recognition of it. We didn't have the understanding of it. So, but we're building upon more spiritual mass and we're building upon more of what we are. So understanding that we don't have to be the person that we want to be at this exact moment, but we just have to be willing and malleable and be a good listener and understand that we are experiencing everything that we want because our higher self always has that in place. God's source energy always has that in place as well. And there's always a lot of things placed on our past and our experiences and our circumstances that really show us if we're being triggered or we're in this experience and we keep having this certain pattern or we allow ourselves to kind of get a sense of healing watching a certain TV program. So a lot of us are going through many different things, but it's all accumulation and an encapsulation of spirit. It's spirit becoming more of who you are and it's spirit working on your behalf to renew your heart. So a lot of us on the spiritual journeys, and my higher self and guides are telling me to say this, is really a lot of us have black hearts. A lot of us have different kinds of hearts. A lot of us have enclosed hearts. But some of us, our hearts are like a butterfly kind of merging out of the cocoon and going through that metamorphosis. And then now you have a different aura at heart instead of just one aura that's of a distorted nature. So a lot of us are getting three different auras within our heart that is a symbolism of royalty. It's a symbolism of like renewal, of love, of tenacity. And when our heart is more expanded, it means that we're actually thinking and coming from that standpoint. So literally that these three auras are coming in and they are reflecting and reverberating back into the universe as a astral projection of who we really are in our spirit. So um, I know mine is, has like a purple, it has like a, like a magenta red and a white gold. Um, so these different auras that we're accumulating are a symbolism of our own royalty. And if you see here that I wear a necklace a lot, um, and I've always liked necklaces my whole life, most of the time, I seem to always have a necklace. It's because necklaces are a symbol of royalty, a symbol of being a king or a queen, or just something that you stand by and resonate in, like a heart of a champion and things of that nature. So everything that we do to express ourselves as a divine expression, as an expression of who we are as a meditative path, Everything that we do from this point on is an expression over our divine preference, over what we want to be aware of the creator within ourselves, but also the oracle that we give that love and that light and that wisdom towards. So everything that we do from, sometimes it takes a year for people, sometimes it takes two, sometimes it takes more than that. 
but we see how we have transitioned and gone in a different realm completely. So there's a turning point in the journey. So literally we are going over this hill. So understanding that when you're going over this mountain or this hill or this mo hill or whatever it is, we go over the mountain and then we're on top of the mountain and seeing the sun in our eyes. Meaning this metaphor is really understanding that we are actually still there. Some of us are there in our spirits. I've had many people tell me, I had a person tell me a long time ago, they had a vision of me. And they said that every time I'm doing my work, I'm always sitting on this like big mountain and like the Himalayas and like in a meditative state and doing my work. So that's symbolic of breaching off and transitioning and going into the great beyond, meaning that you're just there with your energy, you're there to do work, but you're not really doing too much movement. Um, you know, some people like to go to the gym. I like to run and swim. You know, everybody's different with how they channel and how they want to move and progress. So the metaphor for that is really understanding what works for you. Some of you would rather visualize yourselves in the ocean. Some of you rather visualize yourself on the mountain. Some of you rather visualize yourselves in a castle. It all has real meaning and validity and it all really explains your psychic spirituality. It explains your enlightened personality. So we develop different personal traits. We develop different thought forms. We develop different ways of interpreting visions. So the vision becomes who we are ultimately if we're proclaiming the vision, living by the vision, and understanding the vision as a whole. So sometimes the vision can be confusing. Sometimes obedience can be a little difficult. <laughs> sometimes faith can be the very thing that tests you. And sometimes a challenge, like challenging yourself. I'm, I remember my girlfriend challenged me to go into cold water because it's very rejuvenating. It's very great. So every time the pool gets like somewhat cold, uh, even below, like I remember in South Carolina, I would swim in 40 degree water, 30 degree water, because it's replenishing when you see that your body's trying to heat up. So a lot of us are, every single day, we're being a literal, metaphysical, metaphoric cold plunge. <laughs> uh, literally just feeling as if our body's trying to heat up and we're trying to react and we're trying to come back too. So there is this revitalization going around and we're reclaiming the power that was once stripped away from us. So there isn't just one way to be enlightened. There isn't one way to meditate. There isn't one way to do your abilities, but there's many different ways and avenues to do what you really want to do. So trusting the process is trusting God is trusting God and how they can bless you, your guides, your higher selves, anything that comes into your life and reflects back to you who you really want to be means that you emulate the energy of your guides, your higher self and God, because God is energy. God isn't a thing. God isn't a concept. And when we truly experience source in our own way, we see that it's not a thing. We see that it's not this or that but it is just a culmination of the energy that we're supposed to experience here. So no matter how we feel about the direct experience, we are becoming source. But the purification is to release. It is the clearing. It is the emptying out of the old and then in comes the new. So trusting the process is knowing that you have to have faith in what you do and who you are and who you choose yourself to be and who you assume yourself to be in each and every moment. It's just being there as if your life depended on it. It's just being there and presently and seeing yourself on the mountain or in the castle or in the water like I was talking about earlier. 
no matter how you visualize it, it's your portrait, it's your painting, it's what you want to bring forth within your life. So everybody is pretty much different. We're all different on how we attract, we're all different on how we manifest, we're all different. We just have to figure out how we manifest. I mean, some of you can manifest money out of thin air. Some of you can shoot lasers out of your eyes. Some of you can levitate, you know? But that ability is truly source given. It's source driven, but it's given to you as a sign of grace and maturity and how you channel your energy. But not letting it go too out of hand um, because we do need a little bit of regulation. Because if we go too wild, then we're just gonna mess things up with our humanity. It's just the way that it is. It's just the nature of human beings. It's just the nature of all human beings. It's just how we are. It's just kind of how we're built and how we're programmed. But then we deprogram ourselves and we get out of that programming and those illusions and those false implications and that false reality and then we're not identified with a construct or a concept. We're not identified with that, but we're only identified with what we are in this present moment. We are only that. We are only what we want to become in that moment. We are not this, we are not that. We are not anything perceptible, but we are just the projection of the illusion of a different simulation of the absolute. So therefore, we can only really know who we want to be in that moment. So I don't know why people try to join my lives. Um, I, don't, I don't know why people do that, but they do. So it's just kind of funny to see even myself personally, sometimes I don't always trust the process. And I even have clients that tell me that they don't trust the process. But the, the process isn't something that we ultimately always want to trust. The process molds us. It breaks us. It gives us back that life. It lets us recalibrate our energy. It allows us to see ourselves in a much different light. So that we're able to really perceive from that different vantage point. So do you really want to know yourself and to sacrifice everything that you deem as important or as safe or comfortable and really go into the unknown? I think that's what it's really all about is really thrusting ourselves into the unknown because the unknown is not familiar to us. It's not comfortable. It's pushing us outside of our comfort zone. And that's why it kind of feels a little bit off when we are pushed out of our comfort zone. It kind of lets us know like, oh, that's not familiar, that's not comfortable. But everything that makes us stronger, that makes us bolder, that makes us more courageous, actually molds us into the person that we're supposed to be. And we don't have to fall back into those same patterns, that same reality, that same understanding of what we know ourselves and assume ourselves to be. But then it's, channeling the preferred state of energy and consciousness and being more direct with that perception so that the power can be known. The power is something that we know ourselves to be. It's not something that we act like. It's not something that we just do as a hobby, um, but it's just something that we are. It's something that we are and it's something that we do. And we don't have to feel lacking of anything because then we're not in the state of complacency or limit our thinking or limit this person or project on that person. So it lets us really know the reality of things. And then we get that preferred validation, meaning that we don't have to validate ourselves, but we are being validated by the creator and seeing ourselves with that obedience, with that understanding and knowing and understanding and perceiving for yourself is really finding that sense of that moral compass, that knowing that you can go north, east, south, and west, and you can generate those billions and billions of personalities, realities, experiences, emotions in every type of way, 
and it doesn't matter where you go. But do you want it to be more fluent or more ever flowing, more progression, or do you want more regression? Or do you want it to be more difficult, right? Even if you have a difficult, you'll get to the same place, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, because I'm still progressing and I'm still paving the way for myself. So it's kind of like, it's seeing how much you've changed from the past and seeing yourself more presently now, because that's actually coming more into the future. And it's being more present with yourself and your thoughts and your vibration so that you can emanate from that heart center. And if we emanate from that heart center, then we are of that center and of that grounded balance that we're wanting out of ourselves. So we literally just balance the scales. We, so we balance everything out within our lives, our finances, our situations, our relationships, everything that we're experiencing. And we recalibrate it in knowing ourselves even more differently, giving ourselves more intensity and challenge pushes us to not conform to the social norms. So don't conform to reality or society or all of that other jazz because now you have the ability to do the things that you really want to do and to really be daring and to really take those risks and to not limit yourself for that moment and have a state of constant reception. Not a state of resistance, not a state of fight or flight, not a state of putting yourself down, but a state where you just empower yourself to be the best that you can be in this moment. And that's the most empowering thing that you can do. And that's trusting the process, having faith within source and having faith within yourself so that you can lead with your heart's desire. Because that's more impactful than anything that I can tell you at this moment in time. So I wanted to do um, a healing energy. So if you guys wanted to stay tuned and take part in this healing energy. Also, this is White Wolf. If you've never been here before, this is a spirituality channel, meditation channel. I do meditations and channel messages. And I'm also doing readings tonight. I'll be doing psychic readings, healings, activations tonight at 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern. I hope to see you guys there. This is White Wolf. We're going to do some healing energy. So if you want to receive this healing energy, feel free to do so. So we're going to do the Kundalini energy. We're going to have that quick release and then we're going to have rejuvenation. And we're just going to shed the layers and we're going to release toxins out of the ego and allow ourselves to tap more into our vibratory state and to release that stale energy so that the new energies can come in. And we're going to ground deep within Middle Mother Gaia Earth, Archangels of Love and Light, who's willing to cleanse the silver warrior field, tapping into God's first energy and the great I am, diving deep in the Middle Mother Gaia Earth. And so it is. Grandmother and the tribal women are here. Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Sandalfin, Raphael, Mother Mary. And we have Mary Magdalene. So we're going to receive a heart activation from Jesus. Jesus is coming in with this white gold energy all the way to the heart. And then also activating the solar plexus, putting three gold bars there. And then we're going to implement psychic protection as well. So we're going to put the billion layer protection grid over ourselves and we're also going to be creating the electromagnetic kinetic source energy field so that we can be interconnected with the heart of the universe, the motherboard of creation, but also just allowing ourselves to be connected to different streams of consciousness, different streams of cosmic DNA, and different streams of our guides energy and our higher selves energy. 
So we're connecting back to our origin and we're tapping into the soul tree and the soul family. And we're also gonna be receiving emotional healing. Archangel Raphael is having a green ray of healing go under our feet and on the top of our head all the way around our body to help us tap into emotional healing, our sensitivity and our triggers. And Mary Magdalene is giving us the essential oils of source so we can rub our fingertips as we're doing the Stupa Mudra energy. And we're connecting to the tree people as well. Tapping into the power of the I am. Tapping into truth. Tapping into resonance, but also being more grounded within the earth. And balancing our energies and our chakras and our masculine and feminine and our inner child. And the Enochian angels are helping us develop another realm, helping us develop different actions, different thought forms, but also different waves of creation and ways of projecting. Also, these prophetic visions are coming in very strongly. Seeing visions of your future, seeing visions of past lifetimes, and also seeing visions of different things being reflected back as a way of metaphors, as a way of hyperboles, and different ways of deciphering the message and discerning the message. So we're going to tap into the vibrations of God, the sensations of God. And we have the magenta dragon helping us with the 12th dimensional energies.
As the transmission is coming to a close, everybody take one last deep breath. Exhale. And when I snap my fingers, you'll come back to You'll have a greater sense of clarity. You'll know who you are and you'll become the oracle of love, light, and wisdom, which is God manifested in the human form. And so it is. So yeah, that was the healing energy, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. And thank you guys for stopping by. It seemed like the uh, live feed grew even bigger when, um, <laughs> when it got kind of to the end of the live, but that's okay. So I hope everyone enjoyed the live. Just know the trust the process. Don't get too worried about how it's looking at this point in time. Just because it looks a certain way doesn't mean that it's always gonna be a certain way. Just know things are moving on your behalf. And sometimes it just takes time to manifest things. Sometimes it takes time to heal. Sometimes it just takes time to learn and progress and to know yourself even more, more vibrantly, more vividly, and come to a better understanding on discernment and following your intuition and your guidance and listening to spirit, but also following your own intuition and what feels more in alignment and what does not feel more in alignment with what you want to do within your life. So trusting the process means that you have a lot of faith. It means you have a lot of dedication, but also it means that you're not folding and not giving up on your own source of creation. So don't give up on your own source of creation, but just know that you are the source of creation and you are the God that you're seeking. You just have to become that God manifested in human form and project that oracle into existence. So thank you guys so much. You guys can book private sessions. I have a 40 minute special for $100 and one hour session for $200. And I'm doing live readings tonight, 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern on this channel. So feel free to take part in those readings and those healings. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate you being a part of this live. This is why Wolf signing off and so it is. God bless, namaste. And also if you're booking a private session, just text me on my TikTok. I have an email as well. Just text me on my email or the TikTok itself and I'll send you contact information and we will discuss that. So thank you, God bless, namaste. This is why Wolf signing off and so it is.